The gentlewoman from Minnesota is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to my wonderful colleague from the state of Wyoming. I'd like to stipulate, first of all, that all Republican women are pro-women, and that all Republican men that serve in this Congress are pro-women, as are the Democrat women and the Democrat men in this Congress. A no vote on the current legislation, which I advocate for, very simply, is a vote to stand up for the pro-life movement, a vote to stand up for traditional marriage, and a vote to stand up for the traditional family. There already are 20 women's museums in the United States, including one affiliated with the Smithsonian Museum, and including one right next to the United States Capitol. And so why would we be building another? I rise today in opposition to this bill because I believe ultimately this mu museum that will be built on the National Mall on federal land will enshrine the radical feminist movement that stands against the pro-life movement, the pro-family movement, and the pro uh, traditional marriage movement. The idea of celebrated women is admirable. It's shared by everyone in this chamber. No one disputes that. And a few of the museum's proposed exhibits are worthy. No one disputes that. I, for one, am honored to be featured in an online exhibit about motherhood that highlights our 23 foster children and our five biological children. However, I am deeply concerned that any exhibit worthy exhibits are clearly the exception and not the rule. A cursory view of the overall content already listed on the website shows an overwhelmingly bi overwhelming bias toward women who embrace liberal ideology, radical feminism, and fails to paint an accurate picture of the lives and actions of American women throughout our history. Among the most troubling examples is the museum's glowing review of the, of the woman who embraced eugenics movement in the United States, Margaret Sanger. She's an abortion trailblazer, and she is the founder of Planned Parenthood, which this body has sought to defund. Yet the museum glosses over Margaret Sanger's avid support for sterilization of women and abortion and for the elimination of chosen ethnic groups, particularly African Americans and classes of people. I find Margaret Sanger's views highly offensive, and yet she is featured over and over again as a woman to extol on this website and ultimately in this museum. Adding in a conservative woman to balance out Sanger's in inclusion does not alleviate the fact that the museum tries to whitewash her abhorrent views and props Ming Margaret Sanger up as a role model for our daughters and for our granddaughters. The list of troubling examples goes on, including the fact they leave out the pro-life views of the early suffragettes. But let's face it, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't the museum's ultimate goal to get a place on the federal mall of land and federal funding. If you look at their authorizing legislation, you'll see it was the template for this legislation. Begin with a commission, then congressional approval, and finally federal funding. For 16 years, this group has tried to raise financial support, and the museum has only been able to raise enough to cover the current operating expenses and salaries of those trying to get this museum. Nothing has gone toward the $400 million for its building. As it's currently written, the legislation lacks the necessary safeguards to ensure that the proposed museum will not become an ideological shrine to abortion that will eventually receive federal funding and a prominent spot on the National Mall. I thank the leading pro-life groups like Concerned Women for America, Eagle Forum, Family Research Council, Susan B. Anthony List, Heritage Action, among others, who have been outspoken on standing up for the right to life for all Americans in an accurate portrayal of, of American women. Since these concerns have not been adequately addressed, I urge my colleagues to join me in voting against H.R. 863, and I respectfully